This program is brought to you by Emory University. Now, let me move to my own personal journey, you might say, uh, which took me to be a student of Salman Muhammad Taha and to live with him for 18 years and to see how what he said was unfolding in his own life. And what I try to make of it, or my responsibility, or what I owe for the privilege and honor of having been part of that movement. I was a student in law school in 1967 in Sudan when I heard Sir Mahmoud Ahmad Taha speak at, at a public lecture for the first time. And it was a lecture that I could never walk away from. I just heard him once and I knew that this is something that's going to be with me for the rest of my life. In trying to understand what he meant and also trying to emulate the model or to start to follow the model he said, it has taken me the rest of my, the, the next 40 years of my life. We are now talking really 40 years later, since the time I first heard him speak. And so um, what I'm saying now is a personal story of how I struggled through trying to understand and to appreciate the full implications. And you'll see that the, what I end with is quite surprising to some of us, you might say. So a little suspense here. <laughs> So I continue to work with, with the movement at the U.S. student in Sudan. I taught at the University of Khartoum, and I had to leave Sudan in the mid-80s, like many of Taha's students. When Taha himself was executed, the movement was suppressed. And outside the, uh, Sudan, I continued to try to work with his ideas, translated his book, The Second Message of Islam, into English in 1987, published here in this country, and so on. Throughout, I was struggling with how is it that we can implement his idea about social transformation, about social justice, about democratization, and about socialism. Because his, his, his tripartite model of a good society is one that is democratic, socialist, and a, a, a capable of achieving social justice. And I say socialism, of course, realizing that it will raise immediately many connotations in people's minds, and that's part of my question why I said let's suspend associations that we have with terrorists. Because socialism did not start with Marxism and will not end with Marxism. Socialism has a much deeper history and a more glorious future than Marxism has ever been able to imagine. That's a sideline, okay? But the point is that uh, the model Sir Mahmoud presented was rudimentary to me. I could not really grasp how is it going to work, what, what is, how is this going to happen. How are we in Sudan, a society struggling with, with underdevelopment, with civil wars, with racism, sexism, all sorts of deep social problems and economic problems, how is this country going to ever to really transform into something that as glorious as Taha's vision has been? And I continue to struggle with that. But more recently, I have come to an insight that many of Taha's students may disagree with me whether it is really truly working out what Taha has said. But I will give you my own understanding now about how this framework can be described and realized in a way that enables people to achieve individual, uh, personal and individual freedom in that absolute consistency that I was talking about. Now, the point, just to say it uh, uh, immediately and bluntly almost, is that I need the state to be secular so that I can be the Muslim I choose to be by conviction. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.